Hi guys, welcome to Monday. Hope you all had a great um, long Easter weekend. Um, today we're going to wrap up chapter 15 and chapter 16 in your book, um, which is on arthropods. And I'm just going to briefly cover insects using the grasshopper as um, our representative insect, though, um, as you know, um, insects are quite diverse and an ant's a lot different from a grasshopper, which is different from a hornet, which is different from a praying mantis, etc. So, um, but the reason that we use the grasshopper um, as the example is because we usually do a grasshopper dissection. So I'm going to cover the characteristics of insects in general, which you guys already know. If you had Mr. Thurman, you even have a song to go with it. Um, but then, like I said, I'm going to particularly talk about the grasshopper. I'm going to be going through the notes that I have attached to this announcement. Um, and you're not going to have anything to fill in. They're all filled in for you, but I'm just going to um, uh, lecture through them. And um, this video is probably going to be a little longer than 10 minutes, um, but I don't have any other assignment for you to do today, so that'll be it once you watch the video. Um, just a reminder that you do have, um, I want to say you have a quiz Wednesday on arthropods. Yeah, it's a quiz Wednesday on arthropods. And so, um, and then we have our test Friday on um, mollusky kinoderms and arthropods. So that's what's coming up this week. Okay, let me go ahead and go to that note sheet right there. Okay, so again, the characteristics of insects in general are the characteristics that uh, Mr. Thurman taught you about. So they have three um, sets of walking legs, so six legs. Um, most insects have um, at least one pair of wings. Um, actually, most insects have two pairs of wings. Some only have one pair of wings, like the flies and mosquitoes. Um, and then, of course, some, like the ants, don't have any wings, but most have two pairs. Um, in insects, their body is divided into three segments, the head, thorax, and abdomen, and all insects have one pair of um, sensory antennae. Like all arthropods, they have an exoskeleton, they have jointed appendages. So the things that are true of all arthropods are true of them too, um, but these are the things that separate this class, class Insecta, from the other animals in the phylum Arthropoda. Okay, so I told you we were going to talk about the grasshopper in specific, and as we've been doing, we're going to go through the nine life processes um, of a grasshopper, and I'm going to do that while um, I'm pointing to the structures that I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and focus on this um, diagram but I'm gonna be going through those nine life processes. So the first one is movement. And of course, we're all familiar with grasshoppers hopping and they have this really long pair of back legs called their hind legs, very muscular in this part of their leg, which is called the femur, um, like the top part of our leg and lots of muscles down in there that give them the power for jumping. Of course, they can also fly. They have two pairs of wings, their fore wings and their hind wings. Um, and so that's their movement. For support, in other words, um, how do they keep their body shape? They have an exoskeleton like all arthropods. For protection, again, their exoskeleton is like a coat of armor, so that protects them. They also have their, um, their forewings are leathery and more um, stiff than their um, hind wings. And so um, these leathery forewings protect these membranous hind wings and keep them in good shape for flight. For nutrition, um, grasshoppers eat plants and um, they have a really complex series of mouth parts, several different mouth parts that allow them to chew up um, the plant material. 
and then um, from there, of course, um, the material goes into um, their digestive tract. So this is showing you the external anatomy of the grasshopper. This is showing you the internal. And you can see here, this is their mandible. These, that's their jaws. And then from there, the food enters a short esophagus. It goes into a crop where the food can be stored um, temporarily. From the crop, it goes to the gizzard, which is this region here behind the crop. The gizzard is tougher and more muscular and allows them to grind up their food. From the gizzard, it goes to the stomach, the stomach is under these structures here. And the stomach is where the food is mixed with digestive juices. So this is kind of like chewing the food, if you want to say like in the gizzard, mashing it up. And then here's where it gets the digestive enzymes put on it. And these gastric cica, these um, black sort of leech looking structures on this picture um, actually make the digestive juices and secrete them into the stomach area. Um, from there, um, the food passes into the intestine. And then from the intestine, um, where the nutrients can be absorbed, and from the intestine, um, the food passes into the rectum and then is expelled out the anus. So they have a complete digestive tract, a mouth and an anus. Um, in which the food travels. Okay, um, the next life process is respiration. And for respiration, um, I don't think it's shown on the internal anatomy, no, but um, you can see on the outside of the grasshopper, there's these little holes that are labeled right here. And um, those little holes are called spiracles, and the spiracles open up into these little tubes called tracheae, and the, um, that's how air gets into the grasshopper's body. And um, inside its abdomen, um, the oxygen will go from those um, tubes, um, the tracheae, um, and enter the um, fluid that's sloshing around the grasshopper, the inside of the grasshopper's body. Remember that they have an open circulatory system, a dorsal heart, so the blood sloshes down here around in this part of its body. And as it's doing that, it can exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide with the air that is brought in through the spiracles and then into the little tubes called the trachea. Okay, the sixth process is circulation, and we really just talked about that. They have a dorsal heart like the crayfish, and their blood is in vessels some of the time, but it leaves the vessels and sloshes around the body cavity um, also. That's an open circulatory system. For excretion, which is how they get rid of nitrogenous or nitrogen-containing waste from their blood, they have these little structures called malpigian tubules, and if you were to dissect a grasshopper, the Malpighian tubules look like little like hairs in a drain pipe. I don't know, <laughs> they just look like these little stringy hair-like structures. But um, what they do is as the blood is um, kind of sloshing around this cavity, the Malpighian tubules will collect the nitrogenous waste and they'll dump the waste into the intestine. And so the, um, they don't have like a separate opening for urine like people do. Um, they um, take that nitrogenous waste and instead of making urine from it and storing it in their bladder, they just dump it into the intestine. And then when the animals um, um, have a, I don't know if you call it a bowel movement, when they poop, um, then the nitrogenous waste comes out with the feces. Okay, um, so in terms of irritability or how they respond to their environment, they're set up like other arthropods. So they have um, a small um, brain that's in their head region, and that brain is attached um, to the nerve cord, which is ventral. We talked about how ventral nerve cord keeps the nerve cord protected since it's not wrapped in um, vertebrae like. Um, vertebrates 
um, spinal, not like a vertebrate spec. I wanted to say back, um, a vertebrate spinal cord. So um, their um, nerve cord is ventral and um, wraps around the esophagus here on each side to connect to the brain. They have antennae, um, as you see here, uh, just a little portion of, but you see them better up here. And what the antennae do is they can smell and they can also, they think maybe measure flight speed and even like humidity. So we're not exactly sure what all they can do. Um, their mouth parts can taste. Um, they have bristles and you see some of those bristles here on the outside of their um, abdomen and they can, and here's some more where they can detect touch. Um, many of them have what's called a compound eye and a compound eye you may remember from our intro to arthropods sees images like as a mosaic, not just like little, it's almost like you would be looking through like a chain link fence or something. So there's lots of different little images that piece together. And um, some have what's called a simple eye too on their head that allows them to um, detect um, light and dark better. And then they have a tympanum that allows them to hear. It's like their eardrum, but it's not inside of like a ear flappy structure like we have. It's actually here um, on their abdomen. So on each side of their abdomen, there's a little um, area of, of material <laughs> that can vibrate with, um, but sound waves will make it vibrate and it can pick up those um, vibrations um, and interpret them as um, sound. And so that's how they hear. Um, as far as reproduction, there's there are boy grasshoppers and girl grasshoppers. Um, the female grasshopper will store the male's sperm um, in her seminal receptacle, and I, that's shown right here. So um, the male will inject his sperm into the female, and she'll store them there. And then when she lays her eggs out through um, this oviduct um, and through her um, through the opening of the oviduct, this um, seminal receptacle will release the sperm onto the eggs as they move through the oviduct and as they're laid. So they're fertilized as they're laid. Um, if a grasshopper has this little structure right here, which you see in this, um, grasshopper from the external anatomy, and this is obviously more focused on the internal, but if it has that structure, that structure is called an ovipositor, and what it does is deposits the eggs. It aids in allowing their um, eggs to be um, put down into the ground when they lay them. Okay, so that's the grasshopper and the nine processes of the grasshopper. And um, as I said, um, typically we dissect the grasshopper. We really explore its external anatomy really carefully, um, take its different mouth parts off and try to identify them. Um, and then we also open it up and um, look at the structures inside. This here is showing you the ovary. Um, see how the ovary is connected to the oviduct? And so the eggs are formed in here. And sometimes when you open up a grasshopper when you're dissecting it, like the female's body will be so full of eggs, like you hardly see anything else. Like on both sides, they'll take up almost literally like her whole body on both sides. And they're big, like, like um, almost like grains of rice each egg. <laughs> so these little female grasshoppers are just burdened with carrying around all these eggs. So I think if you were a grasshopper, it'd be better to be a guy. Okay, um, let's see, so that's the grasshopper. What I wanted to point out now is that the grasshopper is just one of um, many different orders of insects and um, so remember it's kingdom phylum class order so this is kingdom animalia phylum arthropoda class insecta and then 
there's lots of different orders. And um, mostly um, the way that they're divided into orders, not, not exclusively, but the two big things that matter the most is um, the type of wing that they have and um, the number of wings that they have. Now, that's not all, but largely that is how they're divided into groups. So we get all the different insects and we say, okay, what type of wings do they have? Um, how many wings do they have? And then we can divide them into different groups. And you can get a clue for what the groups are like if you look at like the literal meaning of their, the name of their order. So orthoptera means straight wing. Odonata doesn't mean anything to do with wings. It means toothed. Um, coleoptera means sheath wing. Lepidoptera means scale wing. Hymenoptera means a membranous wing. Diptera means two wings. So there's these are the six um, most common insect orders, but there's lots of other orders. Um, but um, if you look at the different orders, the straight wings are the grasshoppers, crickets, and cockroaches. And if you've ever seen any of those, which I'm sure you have, you know they have like straight wings. The toothed ones um, belong in the, those are like the dragonflies and the damselflies, which are ferocious, predator, <laughs> ferocious predators. <laughs> um, and so you can understand why they're called toothed ones and so on. Um, butterfly wings have scales, and so they're the, in the scale wing group. Um, but key thing for you to know is just that they are um, the or they're largely divided into orders on the basis of their um, number and type of subwings. And you might have some questions where you have to say what's in which order, which um, you would have had to memorize. But of course, now with everything being open, that's open book, that's not an issue for you. So um, there we go. Okay, so I think that's all your. Um, all that I wanted to give you today. I'm going to try to find a grasshopper dissection video for you to watch. And um, if I find that this video is not too long today, then, because um, I, I can't tell how long it is while I'm filming it, um, then I may have you start watching the dissection video. If not, I'll just check in with you tomorrow. You guys have a great day and I'll see you then.